Musk's recent introduction of the revolutionary anti-gravity fighter jet came at an extremely crucial period. As nations across the world race to enhance their defense capabilities and secure technological superiority, this groundbreaking aircraft, which offers a significant strategic advantage, has shocked the world. What impact would this aircraft have in the aviation world? What are the capabilities of this mind-blowing innovation? Join us as we unveil anti-gravity aircraft that Elon Musk recently unveiled. Quite recently, SpaceX Starship rocket made big progress during its third test flight, achieving many of its goals. The two-part rocket successfully launched from Texas and aimed to send its top section around the world for a re-entry over the Indian Ocean. Although radio contact was lost near the end, the company said it was amazing to see how far they made it this time. SpaceX CEO Elon Musk was also very happy with how the flight turned out. Last year, when SpaceX's 120-meter-tall rocket launched in April and November, it exploded shortly after liftoff. This time, Elon Musk was hoping for a much better result from his SpaceX team, and he got exactly that. The rocket roared to life with a massive blast from its 33 engines, smoothly executing every stage of its climb into space. Right on schedule, the lower half, called the booster, separated from the top half, known as the ship, two minutes and 44 seconds into the flight. The ship continued its journey, soaring over the Atlantic and Southern Africa. Along the way, video cameras captured breathtaking images of Earth from over 100 miles above. Next was the challenge of re-entry, where the ship had to come down for a splashdown in the ocean. Video footage showed amazing scenes as hot gases surrounded the vehicle, right before radio contact was cut off. Soon after, controllers reported that the ship had been lost, likely because it had broken apart. Not everything went as planned. After separating from the ship, the booster was supposed to slow down and make a controlled landing in the sea near the Texas coast. It got close, but seemed to come in too fast and was lost before reaching the water. The ship was also supposed to restart its engine for re-entry, but that didn't happen for reasons that aren't clear yet. These issues can be looked at again once all the data is reviewed. Overall though, engineers are confident that progress on the world's most powerful rocket is on track. Elon Musk has even promised up to six more test flights this year. Starship is unlike any rocket we've seen before. The 33 engines on its booster generate 74 meganewtons of thrust, far more powerful than any previous rockets. Even the ones that sent astronauts to the moon in the 1960s and 70s. If engineers can perfect it, Starship will be a game changer. The rocket is designed to be fully reusable and quickly ready for another launch, similar to how airplanes are refueled and put back in the air. This ability, combined with its capacity to carry over 100 tons into orbit in one trip, would drastically reduce the cost of space missions. For Elon Musk, Starship is crucial for his Starlink project, which is creating a global network of broadband internet satellites. There are already over 5,000 satellites in orbit, and the new rocket will be able to launch even more. During this test flight, they successfully tested the opening and closing of a door that will allow future Starlink satellites to be released. Starship will also help Musk achieve his longtime dream of sending people and supplies to Mars to establish a human colony. The U.S. Space Agency, NASA, was one of the most interested observers on Thursday. Starship is a key part of NASA's Artemis program, which aims to send astronauts back to the moon this decade. A special version of Starship would be used as a landing craft, taking the crew from lunar orbit to the moon's surface and then back up again. Before astronauts can board, SpaceX will need to prove that Starship is safe and reliable. NASA hopes to see this happen by late 2026. The Federal Aviation Administration, which oversees commercial spaceflight in the U.S., announced that it would investigate the mission due to how the booster and ship ended their flights. This is a routine step and SpaceX will lead the investigation to review what went well and what needs improvement. This too is standard practice. SpaceX's first rocket, the Falcon 1, was a significant achievement as it became the first privately funded, liquid-fueled rocket to reach orbit. SpaceX designed the Falcon 1 rocket to keep launch costs low for satellites in low Earth orbit, improve reliability, and streamline the launch process. It also served to test parts and design concepts for the larger Falcon 9 rocket. SpaceX focused on creating a smaller, simpler rocket that could carry around 450 kilograms to orbit, 
aiming to avoid financial issues that could arise from building something larger and more complicated. The first stage of Falcon 1 was made from strong aluminum alloy and used a single Merlin engine. It featured a parachute system for safe recovery. The engine underwent improvements with the Merlin 1C version used in later Falcon 1 flights. This stage provided 92,000 pounds of thrust and burned for about 169 seconds. The second stage was constructed from a material suitable for extremely cold conditions and was powered by a Kestrel engine. It had a pressurization system to control propellant flow and thrusters. The Kestrel engine generated 7,000 pounds of thrust in space and was designed to be efficient during flight. SpaceX initially offered the Falcon one rocket at a fixed price of $5.9 million in 2005, which later increased to $6.7 million by 2006. In 2009, the price was updated to $7 million for the Falcon 1 and $8.5 million for the improved Falcon 1, with discounts for multiple launches. By 2012, SpaceX shifted payloads, originally meant for Falcon 1 and 1E, to fly as secondary payloads on the Falcon 9. The Falcon 1 was originally intended to carry 600 kilograms to low Earth orbit for $6 million but later was limited to 420 kilograms as costs rose to $9 million. The final Falcon 1E model was designed to carry 1,000 kilogram for $11 million. Even though it was retired in 2009 after five launches, its success laid the foundation for SpaceX's future missions. The Falcon 9, a medium lift rocket, has become crucial for SpaceX. It has two stages and is capable of carrying medium-sized loads into space. The first Falcon 9 launch happened on June 4, 2010, and its first mission to resupply the International Space Station was on October 8, 2012. In 2020, it became the first commercial rocket to send humans into orbit. By 2021, it had the most launches of any U.S. rocket in history. The Falcon 9 has a strong safety record with 364 successful launches, two in-flight failures, one partial failure, and one pre-flight destruction. The Falcon 9 rocket has two stages. The first stage, known as the booster, carries the second stage in the payload to a certain speed and height before the second stage takes over to deliver the payload into orbit. What makes the Falcon 9 special is that the booster can land vertically for reuse, a remarkable achievement first pulled off in December 2015. As of August 28, 2024, SpaceX has successfully landed Falcon 9 boosters 326 times, with some boosters flying up to 23 missions. Both rocket stages are powered by SpaceX's Merlin engines, which use super cold liquid oxygen and rocket-grade kerosene as fuel. Falcon 9 has carried some heavy payloads into space, including the Intelsat 35E and Telstar 19B. It even set a record on January 24, 2021, by launching 143 satellites in a single mission. Falcon 9 is approved to carry NASA astronauts to the International Space Station and is certified for critical national security and high-priority NASA missions. Multiple versions of Falcon 9 have been built, with the latest, the Block 5 variant, in operation since May 2018. Both stages of the Falcon 9 rocket use Merlin 1D engines. Each Merlin engine produces 192,000 pounds of thrust. These engines are ignited using a special chemical mixture called TITEB. The booster stage has nine engines arranged in a pattern SpaceX calls OctaWeb. The second stage has a single Merlin 1D engine with a shorter or regular nozzle, depending on the mission. Falcon 9 can still complete its mission even if up to two engines fail by running the remaining engines longer. Each Merlin engine is managed by three computers, each with two processors that constantly check one another. These engines can also adjust their thrust direction to control the rocket's flight path. The walls and domes of the Falcon 9's fuel tanks are made from an aluminum-lithium alloy. SpaceX uses friction stir welding to make the tanks, which provides extra strength and reliability. The second stage tank is a shorter version of the first stage tank, using the same materials, tools, and manufacturing methods. The inner stage, which connects the rocket's upper and lower stages, is made of a carbon fiber and aluminum core composite. It includes reusable separation collets and a pneumatic system that pushes the stages apart. The original design had 12 attachment points for separation, but this was reduced to three in the V1.1 version. 
Falcon 9 rockets use a nose cone called a payload fairing to protect satellites during launch. This fairing is 13 meters long, 5.2 meters wide, weighs about 1,900 kilograms, and is made of carbon fiber over an aluminum honeycomb core. SpaceX designs and makes these fairings in Hawthorne. They were tested at NASA's Plumbrook Station in 2013, where they simulated launch conditions like loud noises and vibrations in a vacuum. Since 2019, these fairings are designed to come back to Earth and be used again for future launches. For control systems, SpaceX uses multiple backup flight computers with a fault-tolerant design. The software runs on Linux and is written in C++. They use standard parts and a radiation-resistant design instead of specialized parts. Each rocket stage has its own flight computers, and each engine has its own controller, all using a reliable design to manage stage control. The engine controllers run on PowerPC processors. Boosters that are not meant to be recovered don't have landing legs or fins, but recoverable boosters have four extendable landing legs at the bottom. To guide the core as it falls through the atmosphere, SpaceX uses grid fins that pop out from the rocket after the stage separates. The original Falcon 9 Vi 1.2 full thrust had aluminum grid fins, but these were later replaced with larger and more efficient titanium fins. The titanium fins are better at handling the extreme heat of re-entry and can be reused many times with only minor maintenance. Aside from the Falcon, Elon Musk has developed something extraordinary. Amid all the chaos, Musk's boldness has led to the creation of a real UFO-like craft called the X-1, which is closely monitored by the U.S. government. This impressive vehicle, developed by years of work at SpaceX, can reach hypersonic speeds of 4,600 miles per hour and is very fuel efficient. Musk's move into advanced aerospace technology raises important questions about how innovation intersects with global politics and conflicts. What makes the X-1 special is its unique camouflage technology, making it almost invisible, blending into the sky like a cloud. The Pentagon was initially confused, mistaking it for a UFO and sending fighter jets after it, adding a layer of suspense to the story. Musk's secrecy around the X-1 even caused confusion among Hamas militants. The X-1 is also remarkable because it's the only aircraft equipped with a compact space shuttle engine previously seen on SpaceX Hawk hypersonic missile, which can travel over 4,600 miles per hour and bypass modern missile defense systems. This engine now powers the X-1, which also has a design that cuts fuel consumption by 30%. The spacecraft is also equipped with microwave technology, which can melt enemy aircraft or disrupt their electronics. This could change modern warfare. There's also an unusual use for this system. If the radiation is turned down and aimed at a person, it causes intense pain, making them flee and abandon their equipment, which could then be captured. The X-1 could be a major asset for the US military, but Musk and the Pentagon disagree on how to use the technology. This tension adds to the intrigue. While Musk sees it as a potential strategic weapon, the military is more cautious, leading to a debate about the role of such advanced technology in modern conflicts. Despite the disagreement, the X-1 continues to amaze. Its stealth technology avoids radar detection, and it can fly at an incredible altitude of 105 feet, even higher than the famous SR-71 Blackbird. This combination of speed, invisibility, and altitude could transform space travel and air defense. However, like all aircraft, the X-1 isn't invulnerable. Supersonic missiles are needed to challenge it. This is where the advanced technology of the F-35 Lightning II and F-22 Raptor comes in. But even though these jets are powerful, they struggle to keep up. The X-1 flies at 4,600 miles per hour, while the F-35 can only reach 1,200 miles per hour. While the F-35 is still on its way, the X-1 would have already completed its mission, destroyed the target, and returned to base without needing to refuel. The developers aim to create a fighter jet for the 21st century that could handle all advanced threats. The F-35 and F-22 have strong weapons, like AM-120 hypersonic missiles that travel at Mach 4. However, these missiles can only maintain their speed for a short time, making battles intense. The X-1, on the other hand, uses a different kind of weapon. It has a microwave system that emits electromagnetic waves, like a laser, but over a wider area. 
At full power, the microwave radiation can melt enemy aircraft, but it's usually used to disable electronics, turning a fighter jet into scrap metal. This new technology aims to be part of what the Air Force calls the high-low mix. Its microwave system can interfere with both equipment and people. It also has advanced camouflage that makes it almost invisible to radar and the naked eye, blending into the sky like a cloud. While technology is important, skilled pilots are still crucial. Fighter jets are controlled by highly trained experts who can outthink any operator flying the X-1. This combination of advanced technology and human skill makes aerial competition more complex and exciting. Previously, the only U.S. aircraft capable of reaching such altitudes was the SR-71 Blackbird, which wasn't designed for attacks. It avoided threats by flying very high and very fast. Its radar evading abilities and dark color made it hard to track, and it could often outrun or dodge missiles. At such high altitudes, the X-1 is nearly untouchable by air defense systems, giving it an advantage over the Blackbird. The only way to take it down would be with a fighter jet that can get close enough to launch a supersonic missile. The U.S. has such jets, like the F-35 Lightning II and the F-22 Raptor, which are both strong opponents. Besides exploring space, SpaceX has also launched projects like Starlink, a satellite network providing affordable internet around the world. By December 2022, Starlink had over 1 million subscribers, although some astronomers are concerned about light pollution. Elon Musk's efforts also include humanitarian work. In 2018, SpaceX created a mini submarine to help rescue children trapped in a flooded cave in Thailand. During the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020, the company supported public health efforts by helping with antibody testing, showing its commitment to helping society beyond space exploration. The United States is also working on a next generation aircraft, the FAXX. In July 2009, Boeing made waves with the public unveiling of its sixth-generation fighter concept under the FAXX program. The initial renderings showcased a stealthy twin-engine tailless jet with a tandem two-seat cockpit and a blended wing fuselage. Designed for versatility, the FAXX could operate either manned or unmanned depending on the mission. This concept falls into the 40,000 pounds weight class, notably the Northrop Grumman X-47B, which had been selected for the UCAS-D program was also proposed as a candidate for the FAXX. By April 2013, Boeing introduced an updated version of the FAXX concept. This iteration continued the tailless twin-engine design, emphasizing stealth with its all-aspect capabilities. The updated design featured canards, which typically impact frontal radar cross-section, but their inclusion underscored a commitment to superior maneuverability and stealth. The fighter also incorporated diverterless supersonic inlets, similar to those on the F-35. The manned version of the FASX appeared to have limited rearward visibility, relying on advanced sensors to compensate for this design trade-off. In 2011, the Department of Defense outlined a plan to phase out older FA-18CD Hornets with a new fleet of 220 F-35s. However, a Navy analysis of alternatives in March of that year suggested three possible paths buying additional F-35Cs, developing a new aircraft platform, or a combination of both for its next-generation air dominance program. By May 2011, the DOD was exploring the possibility of acquiring more F-35 to eventually replace 556 Super Hornets. On September 9, 2014, the Navy revealed plans to start an analysis of alternatives for the F-AXX aircraft in 2015. This effort aimed to explore the development of a new aircraft, family of systems approach, and advancements in mission systems, avionics, and next generation weapons. By April 4, 2019, Radham Scott D. Kahn, Director of Air Warfare, announced that the AOA for the FAXX would be completed by spring, with a final report expected by summer. Once the AOA wrapped up in June, the Navy shifted into the concept development phase. Until fiscal year 2024, much of the FAXX was kept a secret under a classified special access program known as Link Plumeria, one of the DoD's largest R&D initiatives. Thanks for watching. While you are still here, click on the link appearing on your screen to check out another of our videos. See you there.